In the future, movies will consist of nothing but logos, and we will be begging for a sequel. You don't know the Fabonans like we do. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous that this race of people who are so paranoid about Fabonans that they jump to conclusions this quickly even bother to allow Kirk into their council with a gift from them. Also, these opening scenes are usually fan fantastic. Can we not see a whole movie that led to this scene just once, even as a web series? This angry alien attacking Kirk but turning out to be super tiny? Yeah, that's one of the biggest laughs in all of 2016 cinema, and I'm taking off two sins for it, because did you see that? That's fing hilarious. Did you manage to broker a treaty with the Tenexi? Uh, let's just say I came up short. You Jeez, you're not only stealing the James Bond action scene openers, you're also stealing his puns. Would you uh, lo log that and put it in the vault spot? It definitely won't be important later. This is hilarious, but did they basically just kidnap these guys and fly away without beaming them back down? As for me, things have started to feel a little episodic. Har har, TV show, har har. I found this in Chekhov's locker. Okay, so again, that's funny, but what the hell is Bones doing rummaging through people's lockers? And did Chekhov leave it unlocked, or is Bones a master lockpicker? I always assumed he'd be a vodka, a vodka guy. That's Russist. Apparently, the Federation decided to build Elysium on this planet. This is a public transporter, which would seem to negate the need for the train we saw just a few seconds ago, but what do I know? Are these people still together? Do I care about it? Actually, I forwarded to the part where we find out that they've broken up for some reason. How do I know they broke up if I forwarded through it, you might ask? Well, that's a very interesting story that skip. I don't think any of us care that Sulu is gay, but the problem is, assuming that because George Takei is gay and therefore the character he made popular is gay is kind of silly, and the antithesis of acting. The Vulcans, who met Spock right after he got off the ship during a bright sunny day, decided to conduct their meeting at night in a private courtyard next to a giant Terminator hand. Current modern Star Trek series actually handles real-life Leonard Nimoy's death with restraint and grace. Another sit off! Greg Grunberg is like J.J. Abrams' Bruce Campbell, isn't he? Well, the Enterprise does have the best navigational system in the fleet. Of course it does. The only ship here with more advanced technology is still under construction. Of course it is. And the Enterprise is back to work, trading on the shore leave never lasts as long as it's supposed to movie trope that extends beyond Star Trek into all of film. Haha, <laughs> beyond Star Trek? You see what I did there on complete accident? Because it's hilarious. The Enterprise is something no other ship in the fleet has. You. Inspiring. Definitely need to give your crew some confidence going into a difficult mission. But if I'm some sort of peon on the ship, I'm wondering, what makes us so f***ing special? Didn't we all go to the same school? Anyway, I guess I'll take it. F*** you, Frank. Missile loader on the USS Derivative. This is ultimate. My ship is stranded here. As the movie will go on to prove, the Enterprise, and Starfleet as well, is really f***ing stupid for trusting the eyewitness account of one individual. No life forms on the surface. Because Starfleet sensors are worthless! What is this? Who cares? Why are you waiting so long to put the shields up? They're flying away. I know Kirk thinks he can take on everything in the universe with the Enterprise, but what makes him think it's going to be successful this time? I mean, at this point, I guess he knows that he's in a movie and nothing can kill him. Even though within five minutes, Kroll will have the artifact he needs, these ships will somehow only break the Enterprise into large, survivable sections, instead of millions of pieces, which is what I'd do if I were a swarm of bee ships. And they took out the dish! Shields are inoperable! Inoperable? As in, not suitable to be operated on? It's an honest enough mistake, but you clearly meant inoperative, and whoever wrote the script or edited this movie thinks the two words are interchangeable. Captain! There's a chance I can reroute the energy reserves from the warp core to the impulse engines! Scotty, you f***ing liar. Okay, these ships pierce the hull to get here. The Enterprise has lost its shields, meaning this hallway should have the environment of f***ing space right now, and all these red shirt assholes are already dead. I mean, right? What am I missing? Those things can't possibly have made an airtight seal. Ah, Oscar Isaac! Apparently the reason for these guys attacking the ship was to steal the artifact from the beginning of the movie. So now that they have it, why do they give a shit about Spock? We are at 100% impulse! Great work, Mr. Scott! Maximum impulse! Yes, it's literally life or death right now. Let's take time to pay the chief engineer a compliment before giving a potentially life-saving order. Jesus. Oh no, the Enterprise is dead again. I wonder if they'll repair it or find a way to bring it back somehow. Woe is us. I mean, exactly who was moved by this shit anymore? Crawl manages to find Kirk, who I guess teleported to this very spot on the ship and started running so he could be spotted. Ahura lucks out with an alien who doesn't shoot her immediately like all the other aliens have done. These assholes survived this. Movie steals the empty box from every movie ever, but let's say it's sneakers. Impulse engines drawing power from auxiliary generators. Man, the war preserves, the auxiliary generators, these impulse engines can draw power from anything. But my biggest gripe is that any of the ship lasted long enough for him to even say this. This ship has been flipping over like a quarter before a football game for 10 minutes now. But for this shot, while it's still flipping, mind you, Kirk is able to stand perfectly still on the bridge and solemnly contemplate his failures. Of course, Kirk gets a first-hand view of his ship's final demolition, because it wouldn't be poetic if he didn't, would it? Look what you did, Kirk, you big dumbass. Movie probably didn't mean it, but I'm getting a serious Star Trek Generations vibe here, and that's not a good thing. 
Star Trek film goes all fast and furious on our asses. Wait a second. Luckily, Kirk landed in about exactly the same area where the woman who betrayed him landed. Uhura is all, well, I'm on a desolate alien planet. Thank God Starfleet has female officers wear skirts, am I right? Also, while I'm at it, thank God, aka the screenwriter, this alien planet has breathable air for humans, no? Federation is an act of war. This guy's Koba speech patterns are distracting. No, seriously. Apes, follow Koba now. Now replay his line. Federation is an act of war. I mean, you see the bind I'm in. He will come for us. I am counting on it. So your plan is to destroy the Enterprise, killing dozens, then capture the survivors and wait for the captain to come rescue them? Do I have that right? I've seen this movie, so I know you don't have a Kirk-specific vendetta. So isn't this just a chilling line that ultimately means nothing? Because I think it is. I got Spock. How are you not dead? I'll cut the whore Doctor, I fail to see how excrement of any kind bears relevance on our current situation. Are you telling me Spock has been on this ship for years and he's never once heard someone use bullshit or horse and doesn't know what it means? That's bullshit. Well, sh this is cool. I'd remove a sin, but I just don't see how this works at all. I mean, the holograms are actually physically fighting these guys. If they were simply hologram distractions, that's one thing, but these are actually making physical contact. You would never need an army if this is possible. Is that English? I learned it from my house. Plus, it saves us the burden of hearing that translator thing again, and it's convenient for the story, so. And you are Montgomery Scott. Hi, Scotty. Come now. Montgomery Scotty. Jayla is exactly the breath of fresh air this Star Trek series needed, and I'm taking a sin off for her awesomeness. Void Enterprise, come in. <laughs> he thinks this could possibly work. Spock is literally the only Enterprise crew member to survive this crash landing, but with major medical issues. Everyone else either died or is just peachy. Only Spock has an injury. Weird. The console is intact, Captain. F***ing how? Ah. Acid sneeze. We got about 15 minutes until the next guard rotation. Come on. And you were able to figure out their guard schedule with the sample size of a couple of hours, maybe? And 15 minutes? I mean, who else do these assholes have to guard? And can't they keep one guy standing outside to keep watch? And how do they know no one's doing that? And I guess even if they had one guard keeping watch, they'd use the old someone's having a heart attack in here routine to escape, but damn. He's access to Yorktown database. Carl is using the Magellan probe to cut through the nebula and hack into Starfleet. One of the biggest problems Starfleet was having was cutting through the nebula with these very same probes. But my question is, there wasn't one person who could figure out how to make these things work before they sent the Enterprise blindly into the nebula. Here, Carl's men catch these Enterprise crew members up to no good. But does he have them killed? Of course not. He's a villain with a conscience. That kicks in only after he's destroyed a ship and killed 50% of its crew in the process. Then he becomes a big softy. Kirk shoots his phaser into the combustion chamber and that ignites the fuel so the ship can fly. Do I have that right? This girl lied to Kirk and sh but man, she did it for good reasons. Yet I'm still apparently supposed to be glad she's dying. Well, there goes the Enterprise again. Luckily, many years ago, Crawl flew a similar ship here that crash landed that they'll be able to use to get back. Jumping away from an explosion just as it goes off cliche. The strength of others, Lieutenant. This what has kept me alive. Strangely enough, I brought you to this very spot to talk to you so I can show off my Human Power Sucker 5000, constructed from corrugated hoses and matrixy doodads. I'm glad you gave me that strength and unity line because it makes this demonstration all the more dramatic. Man, this planet is really f***ing foggy. I think I see the Misty Mountain. Ambassador Spock has died. I want to live as he did. One day, I hope someone will send me to a planet with a roomy cave so I can see my home world destroyed, and another Spock from another dimension just happens to stumble on me when it happens. Is that music? <laughs> of course not. It's rap. Someone set off one of my traps. And it's Kirk and Chekhov, of course. This is a planet, right? Like a whole planet? Because if so, what are the f***ing odds? Don't hurt them because they take, you take no, that. No, no. Jayla decides the best way to handle this is by not telling anybody what she's doing, thereby causing more alarm than necessary. Captured by a giant green space hand. Green Lantern? She's rigged up image refractors. So Klingon or Romulan cloaking technology? She just invented that? Or are you saying image refractors are a thing that exists and the Federation just never implemented this tech to have their own cloaking ships? They're like some sort of holographic camouflage. Hi, sir. Looks glitch as f though, and something Crawl should have already discovered. Or is the flashing just for the viewers so they remember there's a ship under there? Of course, these Crawl soldiers can instantly track and locate a radio signal, but a transporter signal will baffle them completely. Hologram confusingness of death. Hair claw storage. Also, this girl defies orders, opens her face hugger head, and gives Crawl the very thing Kirk wanted to hide from Crawl, and which Sulu was ready to die to protect. Stupid face hugger head girl. Also, good thing she didn't get lost or exploded during the Enterprise attack, huh? Unity is not your strength, it is your weakness. I could have sworn MC Hammer declared that sweetness was humanity's weakness, but whatever. I guess Crawl has just about as much street cred as Hammer does these days, so who am I to say? This MacGuffin is a lot like the first movie's MacGuffin. Remember the Red Matter sh it's a scary weapon, the details of which don't matter, just so long as our hero is thwarted in time. Apparently, if you use outdated medical equipment on someone who's been bleeding internally, they can walk around as if it never happened within minutes. But its unique signature makes it very easy to identify. 
You gave your girlfriend a tracking device. That was not my intention. One of the best laughs I've had in a long time. Once and off. I am detecting a very trace amount of Wakaya. In a minute, Chekhov is going to claim they can't transport the crew out of the area because of some geological interference. But this computer can detect a f***ing radioactive Vulcan rock that his girlfriend is luckily wearing around her neck through that interference. If you choose to do this, you're on your own. The alien who is obviously going to help them has to pitch a fit first so the audience thinks she's not going to help them, because this movie is basically a coloring book. Love the motorcycle diversion plan, but this shot suggests the motorcycle was traveling at full speed before the transporter even started working, which is goddamn ridiculous. Just beam that static standing still and we don't have a problem. Split it into two and ejected the halves into space, hoping it would be lost forever. Why do assholes who want something dangerous gone always do something that totally assures it will be found? Somehow, some way. This is the parallax situation, only with less digging. Crawl puts a thing into a whatever and some stuff happens, leading to Sill's death. Ancient stolen weapon is basically the nanobots from Michael Crichton's Prey. Remember earlier in the movie when you were counting on Kirk showing up? Why do you look so surprised right now? And given you already have the all-powerful deadly weapon, why were you ever counting on Kirk showing up? One of these is the actual Kirk, meaning the captain has put himself in danger once again. I mean, cool distraction, bro. It's like Russian roulette with holograms. Look, even if they're projecting doubles of yourself somehow, they're not all turning in different directions, are they? Wouldn't they all mirror the movements of- Oh, f*** it. I'm going for more wine. Let's hope this doesn't get messy. Energize! Somehow, reconfiguring an outdated ship that barely has any power to beam 20 people at a time doesn't get messy. I have the element of surprise on the person killing all our guards. I shall use my mighty feet and throwing ability instead of weapons to take her down. Oh look, the guy that killed her family has found her and is attacking her. This is poetic for sure, but if I'm Manus, I'd be attacking Kirk, not Jalen. But I guess poetry outweighs common sense here the way it does in a Jane Austen adaptation. <laughs> Deus Ex Uhura. She's a great fighter with a vendetta, but this dude is still gonna basically own her because the movie wants you to feel tension. I'm with some Nestor. This God damn it, so I guess this movie has time for some villainous taunting. Will that make his death more satisfying? Probably not. Jayla's in easy grabbing distance, but this asshole allows her to get on top of this thing anyway. Jayla, no! Here's a whole world of bullshit. And this is where getting a Fast and Furious director comes in, I guess. Besides, how did that transporter not already beam Kirk before he got there anyway? Let's never do that again. This isn't Kirk being funny and exhausted. This is Chris Pine talking to the director about this stunt-heavy movie. These old vessels, they were built in space. They were never supposed to take off from atmosphere. Shut up, Scotty. Just make the impossible happen. That's what you're here for. Ship plane is clearly going to crash die, except it's not, and this is just a silly fake-out scene cliche. Thank God this 100-year-old Starfleet vehicle was built to withstand multiple impacts with mountains, am I right? <laughs> This face, Sulu had no idea that would work, and he's simultaneously impressed and mystified, and that is worth a sin off. Scotty, can you beam me on one of those swarm ships? Have you gone completely mad? This should be pretty much impossible, but Scotty's going to beam two people onto one of these bee ships. Thousands of swarming bee ships, all going in different patterns and shit, and he's gonna get the precise coordinates to do just that. Spock, you're still hurt. Is he? Good thing the ejection panels for this ship are this far away from the actual pilot's chair. Kinda makes you wonder what these pilots would do if they were in a ship that was on fire. That's a good choice. It was indeed, but the odds of her picking this one song Kirk has a previous association with are so astronomical, I'm gonna sin it anyway. That said, damn, I just love that this is the way they're gonna kill these things. It's inventive and smart, and I've gotta hand it to them for this scene. Removing a sin. Master Doctor, we risk being consumed by their trajectorial decay. Um, can't Scotty just beam them out of this thing? If you say no to this, remember Scotty has done about 50 impossible things in this movie already, including beaming them onto the ship. And sure, it becomes useful later that they're in this ship, but they didn't know that was going to happen. Somehow, in all this creamy, chocolatey, fiery goodness, Crawl manages to escape the damage that is inflicted on all the ships around him, and continue this movie for another 20 minutes. The USS Franklin and its occupants survive this. Space cops. Intercepting all three ships is an impossibility. You mean you can't keep playing sabotage and destroy the last three ships? Hell, Yorktown has the frequency now. What's preventing this amazing attack from working again? Did Coral turn on his anti-sabotaging shields? Yes, this does feel like a happy climax, but this movie still has 30 minutes left, if you can believe that. Just like Into Darkness, this modern Star Trek movie refuses to end at the obvious point, instead subjecting us to yet more unbelievable shenanigans. Uhura rewound this f***ing thing about 174 times, but neglected to let it play two seconds after so that she, Kirk, and we could see Idris Elba's face, which is the important thing. God, I don't know how, but Edison is the while we're all being amazed that an old Starfleet captain slash assumed dead hero turned into a monster, basically Colonel Kurtz from Apocalypse Now, this is a bit troublesome. Because remember, Jayla found the USS Franklin and put refractors on the ship to keep it hidden. But wouldn't Crawl have known where the ship was since he crash landed there? I have some sort of technology that prolongs life. Yeah, if you have enough living people to suck out their power. But you just said you only have three of your crew left, and the indigenous species left the planet and left behind only drones. So why did you not die long ago with no species fuel to power the technology? 
And how did you turn these drones, which were made for mining, into an elite swarming fighting force in space? This reveal actually brings up way more questions. Federation do not care about us. Um, you got lost though, behind a crippling nebula? Is it possible in your view that the Federation simply has no idea where you went? Because he wants to find some more to inflict maximum damage. He needs a distribution system. They have to circulate air here, right? Jeez, I mean, he came up with that in like two seconds. Also, no, the corkscrew man-made moon-sized city of Yorktown does not require air. I mean, duh. So that's the only way. This planet-sized space station only has one way to access its airflow. Only one. I mean, f if you ever need to repair this for any reason, right? Kirk is easily distracted, giving the dangerous crawl the upper hand. Wow, this super weapon doesn't even need to be plugged into anything. Huh, who would have, oh, f it, f this weapon. And there's four of them. There are four hatches for this air distributor system that is never supposed to be open in the first place. Why are there four hatches? Why are there four hatches? Must be some way of getting Idris Elba back into the action, I'm guessing. If the hatch is open when the processor cycles and you're in it, you're gonna get sucked into space. Provided, of course, that you don't hang on to the easily hang onable hatch frames when it happens, which is exactly what he's gonna do. Damn it, Jim, you won't make it out in time! Yes, he will. They killed and revived him last movie, so he's untouchable now. Do you even movie bones? <laughs> Spockana. This guy is getting hoisted by his own petard. This swarming evil swarming stuff destroys everything, except well-known Star Trek symbols. Huh, Spock had a publicity photo from one of the Star Trek movies in his possession. Not the adventure he just went through with Kurt, but instead it's the picture of the other timeline's Enterprise crew that ultimately changes Spock's mind about quitting Starfleet. That's the future impacting the past paradox. Hey, Kinzer. I'll remind everyone that this is a proud race of people that have suddenly become Starfleet pets. That's racist. At some point, Starfleet has got to be all like, that's it, we are not building any more Enterprises. You keep f***ing them all up. I gotta admit, this sped up Enterprise construction footage is kind of awesome, and is definitely new and unique, so what the hell, I'll take another sin off. This is Teddy Alpha 5! Excuse me? Don't wait for the translation! Answer me now! The microbots are controlled with this neurotransmitter. I am dreaming. But now that dream is gone from me. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! The fact is, we got every mob in town, east side, west side, ready to pull together. If we take that downtown and we get in a money game, that is ain't going to jail. We are now entering the Mutara Nebula. I promise I won't hurt you. Now come here. No. All right, you want something to eat? Yeah.